this occasion. It's not very often in mind and to celebrate the uh, retirement of Jersey. Um, I also want to thank all of you for your support this year. Uh, last year when we got involved in the club, it, it, uh, we soon learned, maybe that day, that the history and legacy of this club is rather significant.
Steve Gibson. Yeah. He was coming off an injury and he was hesitant about coming here. And he ended up covering that year that we could play a little bit of the and then do, uh, went to Europe. We had a great bunch of guys that first year, but some of them were a handful. John Fagg, Steve San Germano, Howie Rosenblatt, Freddie Noswell. They never got into serious trouble. They were just a fun loving bunch that took a lot of years off my life. And you remember that Hillary Mary commercial uh, that they ran uh, in the last election site, 3 a.m. phone call? Well, I got the 3 a.m. phone call a few times. One time at 3 a.m. I got a call from Mark Bowman, GM of the President Casino, that woke me up and asked me to come down to the casino immediately because it was a promise of our players. John Madden and Howie Rosenblatt were having wheelchair races around the casino at 3 a.m. John said, you better go, uh, Mark said, you better get down here and see this. So I picked up John Anderson and went down there, and here I am, I think we were going to lose our biggest sponsor in my very first year. Well, we walked into Mark's office, and he had tears coming from down his face because he was laughing so hard watching the video. I wasn't as amused by this as John Anderson, Mark Bowman, Patsy Howie were, but we won the championship. And I decided that maybe we needed a few more players to pull up the maturity level, just for my own sad. I wanted serious hockey players who could be leaders both on the ice and off the ice that would make balance out the fun loving lunatics. It's a bit ironic tonight that the exact type of guy I was looking for is currently the coach of the Rio Grande team, Terry Roskowski, the former uh, Blackhawk captain, who went on to become a captain four different NHL teams. I wanted Terry Roskowski a franchise cornerstone, someone who would define our franchise. So after that year, I hit Target to give you after we won our first cup and made a pitch to him, worked him real hard, got Glenn Stewart on the phone with him, and finally we convinced him to come here and play for Quad Cities. We give you knew exactly what you were going to get every night, an honest effort. He eventually became our captain, Quiet leader, and sometimes I want him to be louder, but that was just not him. He was someone that led by example. Nobody ever outworked him, and every year the competition would throw me all kinds of names trying to convince me to trade for him. And Kitty Rodney did everything he could, even pitched Jim Duhart to me. And I said no. <laughs> yep. Do his snowball. Rodney told me all the time to get all the stats. He was the best player on our team, the one player he appeared most of the team. Gibby was not a natural goal story. He was not a Gretzky or a Crosby that made it look easy. He worked his butt off every shift. Dirty work and earned the respect of his teammates, not the team. He was always battling injuries. He was a 25-year-old hockey player and a 50-year-old body. Whether it was lower body injuries, the shoulders, knee, he had to pretty much ride the market corner on injuries because he sacrificed his body every night to help his team win. Every spring we did everything we could to try and get him healthy for the playoffs because he was a big playoff performer. One year he showed back and forth to the Chicago Wolves Hydro Barrett Chamber. I don't know how that worked, Gibby, he was in that chamber. But we did everything we could to get him back from the injuries and we got him to, back two weeks early. Another time he played with an injury in his shoulder and that had any of us known how serious it was, there was not a chance he would have been near without near the ice because he risked paralysis. This man just wanted to play. Steve Gibson, heart and soul, epitomized everything that we wanted in a Mallory's player. Earlier this week I pulled out a scrapbook with some old articles and I looked up a comment and I made it up give you sign. They said, this is a real big sign. Maybe one of the few times I underspoke. Making Steve Gibson a Mallard ended up being an unbelievable struggle up that helped us define the personality of his franchise. It was one of the cornerstones of one of the greatest runs in hockey history. It also worked out well for him personally as a man is quite crazy and opened up a highly successful business in the settled here first year. When you look up at the record, 
tonight. It's no coincidence that Gibby will be joining two other players who are known for their character, not necessarily for how many points they score. That is what our value scheme were about, character. That is why we won. That's why the other people hated us. That's why we were the evil umpire. And that's why they tried to pop us. Everyone who's a part of this franchise will always be proud to have been a Mallory. Next time you see John Anderson, Matt Shaw, Pearl McLean on TV during an NHL game, look at their finger and you will notice them wearing that Mallard's ring. They all have other rings, including Stanley Cup rings, but they all choose to wear their Mallard's ring. That's called Mallard's Pride, a legacy that Steve Kitts and Hulk created. Congratulations to Steve's family, Tracy and his in-laws, and Blake, his son. I hope you remember that night that your dad was honored to be one of the greatest players and one of the greatest minor league hockey teams in history. We hope that one day you two will win an opportunity for Give me on behalf of your many teammates who wanted to be here, but couldn't for Matt Shaw, Paul Gillis, Paul McLean, and the staff that worked beside you. We congratulate you on this special night. And finally, to the Spallard team right in front of us, right here, is David Bell. You guys play with the heart, the determination, and the courage that has epitomized our franchise and make us proud. You know you have your backs to the wall right now, just as we did so many times. In 1997, we came back with a 3-1 deficit in the first round to beat Madison in Game 7, and that started our run. Yeah. You guys are champions, too. Do what the Mallards do best tonight. Win. No excuses. We believe. Go Mallards. Congratulations, kids. I'd like to introduce one of Gibby's best friends, one of our best defensemen, one of the best people to have ever played for the Mallards. He's nervous about what I'll say. Andy Furmwalker. Thanks, Helen. Steve and I have played together for four years. However, our friendship has gone far beyond hockey. It's 12 years later, we're still very friends. The first time I met Steve was when a group of guys got together to skate prior to the season. I heard from other players how great the player Steve Gibson was. After watching him skate that first time, I was asking myself, has this guy ever skated before? And then questioned what kind of league I was coming into. I realized, uh, by finding out from other players, that he missed the entire season because of a shoulder surgery. However, by the start of that season, he was named our captain. And in our first game, I remember him scoring two goals and had two assists. This showed Steve's constant hard work and determination, which is why he was looked at as a leader of this team and why we won a championship. Another memory that sticks out in my mind was also my first year. I was run from behind and knocked out right in that corner. As I woke up in a pool of blood, the first thing I saw was Steve standing over the top of me, and I was expecting a, are you okay? But instead, he was yelling at me, you need to protect yourself. That was great advice. I would have appreciated it more if he would have told me that earlier. Steve has always been the type of leader who's been looking out for everyone else. After I finished playing hockey, my wife Kelly and I remained in the Quad Cities. The hardest part has been away, being away from our family in Minnesota. Steve and Tracy have made this an easy transition for us and they have welcomed us into their family and have always been great friends and we can always count on them in every situation. And I believe that anyone who's gotten to know these two would say the same thing. I am proud to call him a team 
teammate and a friend, there's no greater honor for a Mallard than to have his jersey retired. And no one deserves it more than Steve Gibson. So, with that, I guess I'd like to have the attention to the jersey. And let's unveil it.